I've been meaning to dive into the world of resin 3D printing for a while now. I've always been blown away by the quality of prints you're able to get with these machines, but I've also been quite happy and comfortable in my FDM world. However, a few weeks ago, Longer 3D contacted me and offered to send me their Longer Orange 30 resin printer. So I figured now is as a good time as any to dive in. Let's make sure everyone's on the same page before I continue. When I refer to FDM, Fused Deposition Modeling, I'm talking about 3D printing machines that uses filament as a 3D printing material. The filament gets melted and extruded and relies on cooling fans to harden the plastic as the model is built up layer by layer. Resin printers, on the other hand, use well, resin. So I've got some in this container here in liquid form. Well, obviously it's resin. In this case, with the longer orange, it uses an LCD screen and ultraviolet light to cure the resin as it builds the model. Again, layer by layer. So in this video, I'll go over the longer orange 30 and talk about my experience as someone who's going from FDM printers to a resin printer for the first time. And I'll share some valuable tips that I learned along the way. I've included a link below to this printer and you can get it for $299. Let's just pause for a minute and think about that. A printer for, or a resin printer for $299. First, this is by far cheaper than any FDM printer I ever bought. Second, it's a resin printer. It wasn't long ago that Form Labs shook up the industry by introducing the Form 1 through Kickstarter at $2,500. And, and at that price being the first to bring the resin technology to an affordable level. And that's $2,500 down from $50,000 because that's how much you'd have to shell out for a resin printer just a few years back. And now today we're talking about a $299 resin printer. So uh, let's process that for a bit. Okay, enough processing. Let's start with what you get with the longer orange 30. You obviously get the printer, which comes with a build volume of 120 by 68 by 170 millimeters and slicing software. In the box, you also get these side panels, which you'll have to build, a build plate power adapter, scraper, hex wrenches, five playing cards, gloves, a USB flash drive, wipes, two funnel filters, one bottle of resin, they sent me two extra because I'm special, an extra release film, and your getting started guide. All right, let's go ahead and assemble the cover. You're gonna peel back the paper on each of them, and then you're gonna use these little feet to help you align the sides. It's gonna make it a lot easier, so make sure to use these. And once you get all the sides in place, you place the top and it comes with three rubber bands to hold everything together. Okay, before we begin printing, we need to level the build plate. And if you're familiar with FDM printers, you know that this is standard procedure. It's actually quite simple to do with this printer. All you have to do is remove the resin tank or the vat. That's held it together by these two screws on the sides. And with resin printers, it prints upside down. So the build plate actually goes on top. After attaching the build plates, you're gonna loosen the force screws two on the right two on the left then you're simply going to grab a sheet of paper place it on top of the lcd screen and you're going to hit the home button which will lower the build plate and bring it to a homing position after the build plate reaches the home position you're then going to place your hand over the build plate giving it slight pressure and then you're going to tighten the screws back up and that's all there is to leveling the build plate as you pull out the paper you want to feel a slight friction to it you can now reattach the vac I used one of these blowers that I have for my camera lenses just to make sure I got all the dust out of it and you simply attach the vet with these two screws on the sides. Now we're ready to add the resin and this is a good spot to pause for a second to talk about safety. You see I'm wearing gloves. You want to make sure to go ahead and get a box of nitrile gloves. Always wear these gloves whenever you're going to come in contact with the resin. You don't want to get this stuff on your skin. I always made it a habit to wear my gloves and safety goggles. Now safety goggles you may think is over the top but splashes do happen and you want to protect your eyes. 
as you can see i'm working by an open window so you want to make sure to be at a place where you have good ventilation you'll need to shake the bottle of resin before you add it and always make sure the cap is secured on really tight before you shake it and also my first tip here is you don't have to add the whole bottle here only add what you need longer provided a usb stick with models already sliced ready to go so after inserting the usb stick to the back of the printer i can simply now just select the file and give it a go Let's try printing this zombie hunter head by Thingiverse user Sculptor. This seems to be the new Benchy of resin printing. The build plate will then lower into the vat of resin and begin making our part. I also decided to be extra cautious and I put a fan on the window to draw the vapors outside. I'll most likely be moving the printer to my basement anyway, but for the time being, this actually worked really well. After doing this, I really didn't smell anything while working in the same room. A few hours later and my print is done and now we're ready for the fun and messy step of post-processing. Here is where I wish resin printing was more like FDM where you can just snap it off your build plate and you're good to go. But you do have to pay a price for these incredibly smooth prints. So here we go. The guide called for washing the prints in 95% alcohol, but we are still in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic and finding alcohol is still really hard. I was actually lucky enough to even score this 70% bottle. So that's what I'm gonna go with. As you can see, I had a bit of a tough time scraping the model off the build plate, and I'm thinking I might need to use maybe a little thicker sheet of paper next time I level the bed. That's just from my experience with FDM printing, that's what I would do. Um, that way to give it a little more of a, of a gap there. But I did eventually get it off and into my alcohol, and I swished it around a bit and let it sit for a few minutes to wash away all of the extra resin. Now, I don't have a UV curing station, but it is a nice sunny day, so I'm gonna place this outside for a few minutes and let's go check on it to see how it's doing it looks like it's trying to run away or it could be the wind it looks like i'm gonna need something to weigh my tray down to keep it from blowing over so let's go find a nice rock this one looks like it'll do the trick it's a bit dirty so let's wrap it in some clean paper towel that way we won't get dirt on our model and that should do it. I let it sit out in the sun for about 20 minutes, flipping it once to make sure the sun got all the angles. Now I'm really not sure what the exact time should be, probably depends on the intensity of the sun, but after checking it, the resin seemed to be all dry and it wasn't soft and it looked like it was completely cured. And here is the result. I gotta say, I've never printed anything this high quality. Check out the details on this model. You could even make out the bumps on the side of the head. I really was not expecting this from a $300 printer. I'm completely blown away. After having such success on my first print, I was eager to try out another one. I picked this bracket that was already loaded on the flash drive. And if I can pause here to give you another tip, it is to have everything already set up. Have your gloves in place, your paper towels, your trays, your bin with alcohol, because you don't wanna be running around looking for these things as you remove your model. You also wanna to try to work quick to limit the exposure you're having with these fumes wide open. So with the resin tank, you know, you wanna cover it when you're done. And also with your alcohol container, you want to get in, get out, and then cover it once you're all set. You can see here that I decided to move everything away from the window. With the vat being uncovered and it being sunny outside, I didn't want to have it cure my resin. And I'm still having a bit of trouble removing my model from my build plate. It is stuck really well, so I'm going to try a new tactic here of soaking it in alcohol, seeing if that will release it a bit. Yeah, that's a good idea. I should put the cover back on this resin. So finally able to pop it out and after letting it cure, let's see the results on this one. But before that, one more tip. At this point, I'm realizing that the metal scraper that came with the printer is actually scratching my build surface. So I'm gonna recommend not using it and getting a plastic scraper instead. And here's our bracket after curing outside. Again, very smooth surface on this. And if you take a look, it's got a complex internal geometry with all these hexagons and each of them just printed perfectly, no defects or anything. Also take a look at the holes on the side here and how perfect they are. If you're coming from a world of FDM printing, you know that in order to get high quality holes, you have to change the orientation so it's printing in the Z direction. It's very hard to get good, you know, very circular holes when you try to print it in this orientation. This is really good to know when you those precise models so I'm very impressed with this printer I gotta say two back-to-back -back prints uh, after a quick setup with no issues 
Oh, and another thing with this bracket, it's actually very strong. I wanted to test it, so I actually tried to see if I could break it with my hand by snapping it and wasn't able to. The one question I have on this actually is the little white ring that follows the bottom here. I'm wondering if that's from leaving it out in the sun too long. So if any one of you know what that is or what caused that, let me know in the comments. I'm glad I finally got to experience the world of resin 3D printing. I still have a lot to learn, but it's really great to have another tool that's going to allow me to be even more creative. I've been wanting to do more sculpting in Fusion 360, and now with a resin printer, I have no choice. So stay tuned for more tutorials on using the form workspace and printing them in resin. That's actually what I'm really excited about. I can't wait to try some of my designs on this machine. If you are already experienced with resin printing and and can give me a few tips, I'm all ears. Leave them in the comments below. I also completely just revamped my Fusion 360 Quick Start Guide, and the new guide walks you through some beginner Fusion 360 videos that will quickly get you up and running and modeling your own designs with Fusion 360. I've got the link to the Quick Start Guide down below as well. All right, I'm Vladimir with Desktop Makes. I'll see you next time.